Okay, round two. Time index, 9.14 in the morning, Pacific Standard Time, still the 21st of May, 2023, Sunday, Weaver Gen C, Roseman, California. Okay, showing you the uh, piece of paper and the cell phone as two-dimensional to three-dimensional. In the thinking concerning about our spirituality and our understanding of the universe, we are about the piece of paper on a constant basis. We are having an issue trying to understand the depths and level of human compassion, human mercy, and of the infinite at this point. And no, I'm not trying to get into the cosmological. I'm just trying to tie into the other video I just did. <coughs> my lack of faith in the human condition, my lack of faith in human understanding, we're showing more and more of our dispassionate view of everybody these days, that we're not showing what we were theoretically raised to be under. Now, some people are raised under the conception of hating people left and right because we fear the other person. And therefore, we must hate them a great deal. And that sucks. And I was trying to demonstrate in the other video what could have happened if there was a discussion, maybe or maybe not recorded, between Judas and Jesus at this point over here of how things back then were compared to things are right now. If we actually had Jesus here, and we actually had another 12 following here, I tell you, Christ would have a harder problem, an extreme harder problem than dealing with the people with so much closed-minded and hatred that they still worship God and still think Jesus wants an AR-15 as his weapon. I tell you, he would have a field day over this because some of the other pastors out there are still having a field day over this. And the ones who are promoting the violence on people left and right, they want this war. They think that they're doing it for the glory of God. They're fanatics at this point over here. We must show God our love and our mercy by killing the enemies because that's how the Old Testament was telling us. Bypassing completely some of the, uh, completely the teachings of Christ that they're supposed to be following at this point over here. Since when did God and Jesus actually want a jihad? Since when did Jesus came down and said, I want a holy ji jihad in the name of God? Because in his mercy, in his blood, in his bloodshed that we're creating here, we are worshiping our God. Christ never recorded in the Bible that kind of stuff. It was never recorded in the Bible of that. Of his anger and hatred towards people that he wants to love him so much, he'd kill them. Did he ever say in the Bible somewhere that Jesus pointed to one of his servants and says, I want you to go forth in this town, spread my word, and if you can, to spread the bloodshed around. Tell them that God's coming in town. If they don't believe in them, kill them. Since when has that ever said? Now, right after Christ died, resurrected, and left, there had been some instances that we had a conversion. We had a conversion of one particular person in there a damn guy or in the first place. Paul. Saul. Okay. Saul into Paul. Got it. King Saul. This guy would go out and persecute people left and right who believed in Jesus. He'd take out his warriors. He'd take out his, his armed guards and armed goons and go into different places try to find the Christians. Can't convince him. Can't convert him. Kill him. So while he's out there in the desert, away from his people, he's just wandering around because he needs to get his air fresh and his hair, his head aired out. Then he gets the vision, blinds his, his, blinds his eyes at this point. And in his vision that he's getting his eyes blinded, it's probably, probably overwhelmed him in his, in his squishy brain. But somehow his soul is screaming out on this one. 
And Christ is trying to say, what the hell are you doing, you schmuck? Why are you persecuting me like this? What the hell did I do ever do to you? You! You! What the hell is going on? Well, let's just say that, God's permission, we're going to put you through your little hill at this point. You're trying to pursue me, and you don't even understand what the hell is going on. I am the Christ, not you. I came down here to spread God's word of love, and all you're doing is trying to spread fear and hate. So, I'm going to make a an example out of you, pal. I'm taking away your sight. And you're going to have to depend upon this kindness of strangers at this point, because that's all you're going to be depending upon. And by the way, your name's Paul now, not Saul. I never liked that name. But I didn't name you. Your mother did. So, you're going to go forth and spread my message. I live. And, if I'm remembering the text in the gist, and they have this in the New Testament on this one. He goes forth, blind as hell, being treated by others. I may get the text screwed up on this one, but apparently he went out and then somehow got his vision back a bit. But in the process, he's hearing people are talking about the stories of Jesus. And he's telling people about his story of Jesus. They recognized him because they heard stories about this guy. He says, I'm no longer that person. I'm, I'm Paul now. And Christ talked to me. And Christ tried to set me on my ways. And I hope I have because right now that's all we've got. But what I need to talk to you about is God's real, Jesus is real, I'm blind because of this situation, but I'm getting more and more of my vision back on this one. I think inside of each one of us, we have this internal vision of, our, of what heaven was supposed to be like, and what the kingdom of God was supposed to be like, and we're blinding ourselves from everything else. So before my videos, I'm only doing my own observations. I'm not a guru of anything. But what I try to understand, what I'm trying to understand, is how screwed up the human being is. Getting into the pol political situation we've got right now, we have really screwed ourselves up because we listen to the hate mongers and the fear mongers telling us who to blame instead of looking at ourselves and saying, how could we have helped others instead of trying to hinder everybody, which hinders ourselves. I'm not a pastor, I'm not a preacher, and I'm not even claiming those damn titles. I'm not even a minister, so don't even try it on me. I'm not perfect. I am not good. I have made too many damn mistakes. I've made a hell of a lot of mistakes in anger, including the ones made past few days. I got videos to prove on that one. If Jesus can forgive Saul and change his name into Paul, if he can forgive somebody who has been persecuting Christians left and right because he doesn't understand what, what it's like being a Christian, if Christ can actually demonstrate a lot, hell of a lot of mercy and allowing this one changed person to have that. Why couldn't I have that situation myself? <sighs> Only because I'm too damn afraid or too damn holding um, holding on to my damn anger and fear at this point over here. I know it's been clouding me a hell of a long time. I can say I can forgive, but do I forgive and forget? Or actually, do I forgive and say, I'm holding you accountable at this point over here? Even if I get a good explanation, I still don't like or trust you. <sighs> I know Christ knew of a past of Saul and how things had to change. Now, somewhere in the New Testament, right after Christ's death, they're talking about those things. I'm just 
just not quite sure which particular book. But I came across them every once in a great while. It has to be a message for myself as well. It has to be. I was in the process of trying to help a young lady out, but I was getting too damn angry about the process. I was getting too damn pissed off and scared about the situation because I was thinking my brother and I are failing fast and yet we're trying to help her out. I know self-sacrifice would have been great and glorious. I was thinking about mere survival at this point. Or after my brother died, I had to close off contact with this woman because there was no way in hell we are going to be helping her out. And I kept thinking she was a scam artist. Maybe she is, maybe she isn't. But yesterday she contacted me and I hung up on her. I did not recognize the number. There was no voicemail message left. And the text came back on that one. Especially when I sent out an inquiry on that. Who the hell are you? When they talked about Zom and when they talked about the code word on that, I used. I'm like, oh shit, she's back. I shut everything else down. Because I didn't want to relieve the pain. I didn't want to go through the anger. I didn't want to go through all the damn nightmare that I was trying to get myself away from. Trying to function left and right. But even when she was still around, I was still feeling like I was getting sucked dry. I feel like I was being leached upon. I wonder how Jesus would have been responding to this one. Would I fare better than Paul? I wasn't denigrating Christ at all. But I guess I had maybe one way or another. I didn't even realize it. And being anger and zealous. So I was looking at, I don't know what the hell pissed him off to be angry at God and angry at Jesus to where he didn't believe anything of it and just went after the followers. <coughs> Trying to nail everybody else who, his his quest was just to nail, was just rub out Christianity. He was given orders, he was given a contract, he was going to do it. And then he discovers the reality behind it. Changed his life, changed his perspective, changed his mission altogether. He never renounced it. Not even until the time of his death. Do I still have that option? I'm not being pursued by the Roman legions. Maybe my own damn conscience at this point. Why does it matter regarding the people I see around me? Because I still think they're all fools and idiots at this point over here, following someone else, leading them over a damn cliff, and think that they're going into, into the Legion fields instead of the, instead of the rocky terrain of Tartarus. Screw heaven when you can throw them to hell and claim it's still heaven. I got my own personal journey. I got to work through this one. But how did America and its people work through a fiscal cliff that we're going over? This demagoguery going on. This worship. This fanaticism. It's not the fanaticism of believing in democracy. It's the fanaticism of believing in one ring, one rules them all. And giving up everything. Including your own dignity, self-respect, and humanity. Lessons I still have to learn the hard way myself. Am I learning it? Am I understanding it? I know I'm getting my ass kicked on this. The problem is I don't even know how to see straight on this one. If I did, 
I don't have a way out, but I don't have a way out. I simply have to deal. I simply have to cope. I'm not looking forward towards it. I'm not looking at it in the one best way. I'm struggling with mine. I think somewhere in a, in a either New Testament or Old Testament, we're talking about a guy named Doubting Thomas. The thing is, I can't be doubting of God's faith or God's will. Simply because I look at my damn ch my my chest. Age of four, heart open heart surgery, died three times, came back to life three times. Because he wanted me down here. I can't, I can't discount that. But the problem is, I have been doing it for a hell of a long while. I've just been clinging on to that dim. That distrust. And the anger. And the fear. Hard to let it go. It's like wearing a scratchy wool jacket on a hot day. You're so damn comfortable with the damn thing. You're not knowing that you're sweating like crazy, dying, dying of prostration, dying of dehydration. Yet you love that old damn scratchy coat. How much it's killing you. Some things to think about on a day like this, isn't it? It's a hot day outside. It's getting hotter. Energy bills are spiking. The bills are putting me out of commission. What's a guy supposed to do? Contemplate, contemplate, and go nuts, I guess.